All right. Uh, good noon, Justice Scarpio. Thank you so much for joining us, Justice. Thank you, Richard, for having me and uh, 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 greetings to our viewers. Thank you so much. I mean, of course, Justice, you and I have been having a lot of conversation over the past few years or so, a lot of ebb and flows, a lot of changes in the Philippines' foreign policy direction, of course, over the past decade. Uh, una, una, uh, Justice Carpio, how do you feel about the current alignment of things? I mean, the current predisposition of the administration, Marcos administration, especially on the West Philippine Sea issue and towards US and China, because not long ago, people were warning <laughs> that, oh my goodness, Marcos Jr. is going to be like his father or on foreign policy is going to be like Tatay Digong. We heard words like Manchurian candidates. He's going to finish off what Duterte could not, you know, uh, <laughs> put to rest. I mean, and yet now we're turn things are looking familiar in the sense that it's looking like Aquino administration era where we have an administration which is relatively tough on China, to put it mildly. Uh, Justice Gary, what are your honest opinions about how things have turned out without being, of course, illusionado about, you know, the other concerns we have with this administration and the human rights, democracy front, etc.? Well, uh, as far as the West Philippines is concerned, sabi ko nga, uh, what uh, President uh, Marcos Jr. is saying is music to my ears. No, I'm pleasantly surprised, just like you, that... Uh, he has made a complete turnaround and uh, he's actually saying what we want him to say. Uh, what we wanted uh, the Duterte administration to say, he, uh, President Marcos Jr. now is saying. So, uh, of course, uh, we have to watch whether he will walk the talk. No? Uh, and uh, But uh, so far, he has said the right things and I'm uh, I have no... Uh, I cannot criticize him for his, pos his position. Uh, I am just waiting. Uh, the the acid test will be whether we can send our survey and drill ships to uh, Reed Bank, accompanied by our Navy, <clears throat> in joint patrol with the U.S. Because uh, whatever China says, even if China doesn't recognize our EEZ, even if China doesn't recognize the arbitral award, as long as we get the gas, in Reed Bank, then we are winning. It's just like Malaysia. Uh, my, uh, China said you cannot get the gas uh, in your EEZ because that's within the nine dash line. Uh, there will be war, but Malaysia was able to get the gas. Uh, the US and Australian warships were there to, uh, conducting naval drills at the same time. So it does not really matter for Malaysia that uh, China doesn't, rec doesn't recognize it's EZ as long as Malaysia gets the gas, that's the bottom line. The same thing with Indonesia. Uh, China said you cannot get the gas, that's within the nine dash line. But uh, Indonesia still sent its surveying drill ship to the Natunas, uh, and uh, the US aircraft carrier Ronald Reagan just happened to pass by, and the Chinese Coast Guard could not do anything. So Indonesia is winning because it's getting the gas. That's the bottom line. Here we are. Uh, we could not get the gas even now. But uh, we are. I understand that uh, there will be a joint patrol before the end of the year in uh, Reed Bank in that area. And we will be sending our, I hope we will send our survey and, survey and drill ships there so that... Uh, will be able to get the gas. It will not matter if China doesn't recognize the arbitral award as long as we get the gas. That's it. Thank you very much, Justice. Oh, there's a lot to discuss here in terms of acid tests, no? Uh, but before going there, what is your hunch uh, when it comes to this redirection compared to what was expected of Marcus Jr.? I mean, after, just after the elections, I already had a couple of pieces about looking at the legacy of his own father, the Marcus Senior administration, which I think in fairness, no, I mean, we can say a lot about its horrible human rights record and management of the economy, but I think the Marcus Senior administration has a pretty decent record of being proactive in the West Philippine Sea, you know, building our facilities in Pagasa. And I always felt that the shadow of the father could be a positive influence, at least on the West Philippine Sea and South China Sea front. So I've been very transparent on that. 
on the record through elections and just right after the elections. Um, my also hunch is perhaps the Biden administration's reaching out to him, providing him, you know, sovereign immunity right away, or at least telling him about that. Maybe that also, you know, reassured him not to mention China, not really offering anything during his visit to China. What is your hunch? What do you think was decisive in, well, in uh, Parker Jr., what he was? Or did everyone just misread him all through throughout the election? Yeah, before uh, President Marcos Jr. went to Beijing in January, uh, I was asking uh, the people uh, in his administration, uh, what will he tell uh, President Z? And uh, I was told that he will tell President Z that I have to get the gas in Reed Bank because we are running out of gas in Malampaya. And if we don't get a substitute, then uh, we'll have 12 to 14 hours of brownouts every day in Luzon. And that will be devastating the economy. And that will make me very unpopular. I mean, uh, that will really make him very unpopular because inflation will go up to the roof. No? So uh, uh, they told me that uh, the president, President Marcus Jr., will tell uh, President Z that I have to get the gas in Reed Bank. And I said, what if uh, President Z turns it down? Well, we will go to the Americans. That's what I was told. So when uh, after the trip in uh, Beijing, when he arrived in Manila, he announced immediately, we will have joint patrols with the U.S. because that's really the formula to get the gas. The Malaysians have shown it. The Indonesians have shown it that that's the formula. You go there, survey and drill and have the uh, American warships in the area. That was the successful formula. And uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So I think that was the clincher, because uh, if we cannot get the gas in Reed Bank, we have to import LNG that will make our power rates increase by at least 50%, because uh, LNG now is very expensive because Europe is buying LNG from the rest of the world because it cannot buy natural gas from Russia. So we have to compete with the EU and uh, LNG is more expensive the natural gas because you have to uh, convert the natural gas to liquid just to transport it. And once it arrives in Bataan, you have to uh, store it underground. And when you need it, you have to regasify it to feed it to the gas-fired plants. So it's it's really expensive in itself. No? Plus the fact that the price of LNG has gone up. So it will really be devastating to our economy if we have to import LNG for our, uh, we are, I think we have now four gas fired plants in Luzon. And uh, so I think uh, he had really no choice but uh, to, to, to tell the Chinese that I have to get the gas. If not, I will have to get it the way Malaysia and Indonesia was able to do it. So that's that, the way I look at it. Although, right. of course, yeah. we all know that. Uh, we have to give credit to President Marcos Sr. for for what he did uh, in the Spratt list because he he issued that uh, PD 1596 to incorporate the uh, Kalayan Island Group as a municipality, and he was the one who sent before that our military there to to occupy the islands. No, and uh, that was in the early 1970s. Uh, we have to give credit to him. And probably uh, Marcos Jr. Uh, realizes that he has to continue the legacy of his father. It could be that also. But I think the crucial thing is uh, the problem that's facing us as a nation now is we are running out of gas in Malampaya. That's it. So it's the urgency of the energy security and by extension, our economic security that you think was really decisive. Um, now, of course, I mean, in fairness to Marcos Sr., also with, you know, Eseleto Mendoza, etc., we had that, I think, Manila Declaration thing. We brought other post-colonial nations. This is a United Nations Convention Law of the Sea negotiation. So in, I think on multiple fronts, the Marcos Sr. administration had a positive contribution to ensuring countries like the Philippines can have, you know, a uh, pretty good standing when it comes to defending our rights, sir. But going back to this energy security issue, uh, were you surprised that China really offered him nothing. I mean, I mean, I went through the whole what what was it like sixteen point whatever joint declaration, Dunsa Beijing. 
even dun sa big ticket infrastructure projects, there was really, really nothing except that, you know, that bridge in Davao, which was already agreed before. It looks like the 22.8 billion that was offered to him was just repackaged 24 billion, which was more, mostly unfulfilled. I think I, I said pledge trap all the time. I said debt trap, forget about it. Walang papa. I mean, are you surprised about how China has been completely wasting its opportunity to win over people like Duterte and Marcos who are not your typical pro-American reformist liberal leaders? I mean, um, it, does that show uh, arrogance? Does that show um, naivete? What's going on there? Do they think they can get the Philippines on the cheap? Well, even during the time of President Duterte, he could not get the uh, President Xi to deliver on the promises on those uh, uh, twenty-four billion dollar loans and investment. Uh, out of the that amount, only less than five percent materialized. No, but but. China is uh, having economic difficulties right now, uh, and uh, uh, their, their economy, their real estate has collapsed, their exports have gone down, and uh, they have uh, uh, the real estate really is very bad. The tw they have 20% unemployment for their youth. So uh, I think they have to prioritize their own problems uh, domestically. So I think uh, they're not in a position now to if they were not in a position during the time of Duterte, uh, with more reason, they are not in a position now to 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 deliver on their promises. No, uh, what whatever may uh, may be the reason, they really I I don't think they really intended to deliver on their promises uh, because they know that uh, the a new president could come in and change the entire equation. Could go back to the Americans. I mean, re to the to the U.S. and the EU. So uh, it will be a waste of uh, investment on their part because uh, they can capture the leadership in the country, but they cannot capture the the elite and the massa because there's a inherent conflict. They are grabbing our territory and maritime zones. So he, they can never get uh, the support of a majority of our people. Uh, an overwhelming majority of the people will always be against China because China is the only country in the world that has territorial and maritime designs on the Philippines. So uh, the, I think they realize that it, uh, they will be throwing uh, just money and wasting that uh, invest the, what they will be giving us. So uh, we are the last in their list of uh, uh, in the, their priority list. If they want to give uh, uh, financial aid or lend money to developing countries, uh, Justice Scarpio, um, going back to this, when it comes to uh, China, what about them relying on vectors of misinformation? <laughs> Yung mga, I don't know, mga forum, forum dyan. Yung mga, uh, yung mga influencer dyan. Yung mga overnight on clause international law expert. Di ba? Yung mga resident analyst dun sa isang, I don't know, news channel. I don't know, band na ulit ba yan on YouTube. I, mean, I think people know what we were talking about here. Do they? Do you think that they overestimated the power of these vectors of influence or misinf uh, misinformation to turn the tide when it comes to public opinion? Or, or were they looking at, you know, I don't know, Pogos, but, you know, all sorts of different ways to corrupt or, or capture our, our elite and all. Uh, do you think that they, they had a hope about that? And and what do you feel about the fact that the current administration, some of whom were working in the previous administration, suddenly now coming out, guns blazing and saying, no, no, we have to fight against Chinese misinformation. So I said, wait lang, dati post yung si Digong. Si Digong na mismo eh, was behind misinformation and all this pro-China stuff. Then suddenly now you're for... I, how do you feel about that? Because, you know, like, I, I want to be nice, but sometimes when I scratch my head, Justice Carvio. Well, uh, on the uh, small but vocal group of Filipinos who are supporting uh, uh, China on the West Philippine Sea, uh, they are completely just parroting the line of China and uh, uh, they're saying that uh, uh, the uh, Cairo conference, the Postdam declaration awarded the Spratlys to, to China. Of course, he did not award. In the San Francisco Peace Conference of 1951, Russia, USSR then, uh, made a motion to award the Spratlys and the parcels to China, and it was voted down overwhelmingly. So it was 
totally rejected and they don't mention that and uh, what governs what the uh, the disposition of uh, territories after world war 2 is really the san francisco peace conference so uh, they, they are grasping at straws and uh, they're they're just uh, echoing the chinese propaganda we have but we have debunked all of this uh, chinese propaganda a long time ago and it looks like they're not even uh, research doing their own research because they just uh, parrot the Chinese line. And uh, the, oh, this Chinese propaganda has been debunked by so many scholars already. Well, uh, it's uh, I'm surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, the uh, Marcos Jr. administration is now fighting this information, making it uh, uh, an important uh, uh, platform of his government. Uh, uh, but I I don't know uh, how he will do it. Uh, but uh, of course, if to be fighting disinformation has always been uh, our advocacy also. And uh, I hope uh, he, he will do something positive about it. Justice, what about the passing of a foreign influence act, like what the Australians and Taiwanese have, right? To really pin down etong vector vectors of misinformation. Because, I mean... Of course, we have nothing against uh, yung mga kababayan natin who genuinely have concerns, you know, with the Philippines, I don't know, uh, going to war to China with China or being over-reliant on the United States. Of course, that opinion may be very much based on the misinformation, but I want, you know, you know rule out many Filipinos on ideological, emotional, or lack of information grounds, having certain opinions that differs from you and I and, uh, and, and from the administration. Pero parang ibang usapan yung iba dyan na consistently... Yung talking points nila, parang alam natin saan galing yan. Consistently, they have been besmirching the Filipinos. They have been besmirching AFP. They have besmirching you and I, especially you, Justice Scarpi, over the past few years. Pag-usapan natin even more later on. So, do you think it's time for a foreign relations, I sorry, foreign influence act and some sort of, you know, efforts to really fight sharp power operations by, by hostile authoritarian powers? Well, uh, there is a balancing act that we have to do here, uh, Richard, because uh, I am uh, for freedom of expression. Uh, I have, uh, but uh, there are many things that we can do. Like, for example, Ateneo and uh, UP, they opened uh, Confucius Institutes here. And uh, it's a one-way street because uh, the Chinese could distribute materials in our campuses, but we could not do it in China. So, if we open, uh, if we enter into uh, uh, agreements with Chinese universities on uh, the Confucius Institute, we should make it reciprocal. We should open also Rizal Institutes in their campuses. We have Rizal Institutes. Uh, there's a law uh, on that. Uh, and we have one in uh, London that was opened uh, because they can distribute materials here on the, their own narrative about the South China Sea, but we cannot distribute that in uh, China. So uh, if we require the reciprocity, they will back out because there is no freedom of expression there. <laughs> they will be able to distribute my book there. Your Whatever you wrote can be distributed there, and they will never allow that. So they will stop. They, they will not open a Confucius Institute if it will be reciprocal. So that's the way to fight it. Uh, uh, and we just have to expose these people. They, they, they just part of the narrative of, uh, of uh, China. So we, we explain it. And uh, if they say that uh, the Cairo uh, conference and the post declaration awarded the Sprat list to China, we just show the records. So it... it uh, it uh, it is an opportunity for us to explain to our people, and uh, I don't think they will win the argument because uh, they, they, what they are peddling are false historical uh, uh, claims. It's these are really false claims, and we have the the uh, historical records to back us up. Now uh, there is a, a movie in Congress to enact the foreign agents act foreign lobbying act that's okay because but this is limited to uh those who lobby uh, in congress no uh 
just for transparency, I mean, you just register. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on behalf of government of X, Y, Z, which is normal, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong. Just be transparent about it, no? So we're not here to pin you down as spy or anything like that. Just, just be transparent, no? Uh, so that you're more comfortable with that, Justice Scorpio. Yes, uh, just, just register. Uh, if you are a lobbyist, uh, just register. Uh, but we still accord them freedom of expression. But at least we know where they're coming from. Uh, they cannot uh, uh, appear as nationalists because they have registered that they are lobbying for a foreign country. Yeah, I mean, you know, we just want to understand where these people are coming from. No, Bakit consistently they're arguing the position of another country, not the Philippines, right? I mean, as scholars, I mean, you and I have written books on South China, etc. You know, we'll argue this is the Malaysian position, this is the Philippine position, this is China position, and they will weigh... Walang ganun eh. This is sa kanila, like this is Philippine position, Malaysia, China, and then purong China position, China position, China position. And then if you criticize them or or question them, they'll say, bayaran ka ng Amerika, and then they'll tag you <laughs> as being uh, agent for United States. So, eh, medyo magulo yan, di ba? So, let's just, uh, ano, let's just be open about it, di ba? If you guys are really lobbying in behalf of Chinese embassy or whatever, then just register and, you know, and we'll take your arguments accordingly, Right. Baka takot sila once they, they are transparent about what the, you know what's their affiliation. Wala, walang lalong maniniwala sa kanila. But 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 I my understanding just Scarpe is that you're a little bit iffy about some of this conversation around you know pushing back against foreign influence operations because perhaps you you're concerned that this could be a rabbit hole that this could be a slippery slope towards some sort of a uh, you know another form of red tagging in a sense because. Just as Carby, to be fair, I mean, they're good friends of mine, mentors of mine who are, you know, on the other side, not because they're pro-China, but because they're still arguing that anti-American position that they've been arguing for the past 50 years and mong hindi naka move on. But I cannot take that against them. That's their ideological personal position. Yeah. I don't think that makes them agents of China. So I just want to also make it distinguish this kind of progressive thinkers from those who are clearly agents of China. And unfortunately, you know, having at the mga forum, forum, bakery, mga ganyan, and then <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the as long as uh, they identify themselves if they are receiving money from a foreign country, that that, that should be the rule. But uh, if they are not receiving money from a foreign country, then uh, they 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 will be expressing their uh, opinion. It's part of their freedom of expression. If they are receiving financial aid from China. They should they should uh, disclose it. Uh -huh. uh, that should so be the, the case. The money trail is important here, no. So, but but how they establish my money? I mean, they could just say no, wala wala money trail. But there could so there should be some intelligence gathering, right? Inevitably, yes, uh, it's difficult to prove. But you know, they were able to establish that in the U.S. and in Canada uh, that these people uh, that the. the Pro Chinese, they receive uh, aid, and I think we can do that also here now. And uh, the as long as there is a law that says that uh, if you are receiving uh, financial aid from uh, from a foreign country, you should disclose it uh, uh, to work for the interest of a foreign country. Now, and that's it. Uh, it's up to our uh, intelligence agency to to get the uh, the evidence for that but as long as there is that fear uh, that there is such a law no they they are aware of that and that i think uh, will be a deterrent that's the most that we can do because uh, we don't want also to stifle freedom of expression but uh, richard i'm very comfortable with our position because i think we have a uh, law and the facts on our side it's a matter of explaining to the people and the survey shows uh, surveys show uh, since the 80s that uh, uh, 80 to 90 percent of our people support uh, the, uh, the, our position to defend the West Philippine Sea. No? So, uh, and if you reach 90 percent, that's unanimous, practically unanimous. In fact, the uh, mga uh, mga was telling me if you if you reach 85 percent, that's unanimous already. So I think we have the support of the people. We just have to uh, answer them. Uh, uh, they've been attacking me, but uh, I, I just reply, state the facts. No? Because we have the facts and the law on our side. And we are defending our own territory, our own maritime zones under international law. 
And if they don't want to defend uh, Philippine territory and maritime zones, then the people will tell will be the one to tell them that you are you you are betraying the country. So, Justice Carr, it looks like you're in, you you still subscribe to the marketplace of idea. You know the kind of John Stewart Mill and you know the idea that you know if they're gonna get false, we were gonna go the right way and we can. We can fight it back, uh, based on based on the force of our argument, and the yes, I, I still subscribe to that because uh, the alternative would uh, would be bad. Uh, if we have another Duterte, we might we might be at the receiving end of the law. Uh, it it could be a double edged sword. I also yeah, understand. That. I just felt it's perfect to ask you, Justice Carpe, because just a few years ago. You were at the forefront of raising concerns among the new anti-terror, you know, law na yes. gobierno because there is some slippery element there. And and I, I remember very well, and this is where I essentially I'm arguing against myself, um, uh, which I don't I don't bother. Because remember, they kept on saying Kinopia nila in Australia, no, on how to create a balance between counterterrorism and freedom of expression. And then now I'm hearing that, well, Australia could be also a model for foreign influence or foreign. And and so as I say, okay, like you know, you're right. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, you know, Justice Carpio, that maybe now you're excited because there's the you know this this uh, pro-China people people involved. But in six years, things could look different. This could be used against anyone who is perhaps critical of over dependence on the U.S. or and being tagged as pro-China. And who knows, right? What's going to happen if Trump comes back to the White House? You and I may end up criticizing the U.S. and then we'll be tagged as pro-China, right? I mean. <laughs> This could become crazy, right? In a few years from now. So I really appreciate you adding your voice to this debate. I want to hear more from you. Uh, I I hope more of your your ideas on this issue is also percolated because I think now suddenly there's a lot of lobbying for foreign relations act, something more aggressive on this front. But thinking about man Justice Garby, that's also because Marami na frustrated because for six years the president, many people got away with spreading a lot of nonsense, right? So I think some sobrang nonsense. And speaking of nonsense. Um, well, way more in your case than mine, but the angle of Vietnam, right? So a while ago, you mentioned China is the only country that is really creeping into our waters, right? Um, but of course, technically speaking, Vietnam also has some overlapping claims with us in the Kalean group of islands or Spratlys. And yes, back in the what 70s, bayan, um, na kinoy yung sang isla nung nag naglaro, nagising, and I, okay, we know that story, right? But this is so long ago, right? And last time I checked, hindi tayo binubuli ng Vietnam sa pag uh, sa pag-asa, sa ayungin, sa panatag. So, uh, Justice Garvey, can you right off the bat go again? What is this nonsense attack about you and because of your personal connections uh, to uh, Vietnam, not necessarily the Vietnamese government? Um, can you just, speaking of pushing back again, facts, facts, facts first. Christian okay, is facts. <laughs> yes, go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia uh, have no claim on our exclusive economic zone. They agree with the arbitral award because the arbitral award does not touch on the territorial dispute. The territorial dispute concerns the high tide feature and 12 nautical miles. Beyond 12 nautical miles, that's the exclusive economic zone. And that's the ruling of the tribunal. The tribunal said beyond the 12 nautical miles of all these islands in the Spratlys is the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. And all of them agree. They don't question that. So our dispute with them is on the territorial dispute. Only China questions our exclusive economic zone. China is claiming 80% of our exclusive economic zone in the West Philippines. So as far as the maritime dispute is concerned, we have only one adversary. China. On the territorial dispute, there are five disputant states. But that territorial dispute will go on and on because there is no tribunal, international tribunal that has compulsory jurisdiction over it. As far as the ASEAN countries are concerned, we have an, uh, an unwritten agreement that we will stand still, a standstill agreement. Uh, we do not occupy what the other has occupied already. And on top of that, you have the declaration of conduct that you do not occupy unoccupied features. So we, we th with that, uh, we are comfortable with that. We even play basketball, volleyball with the Vietnamese. But our dispute with them is limited to the territorial dispute. 
which is just five less than five percent of the entire West Philippine Sea. So we don't have a dispute with China, with the with the Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, as far as our exclusive economic zone is concerned. And this is where the marine wealth is located. The gas, the oil, the fish, they're all in the exclusive economic zone. So that's why we can live with the territorial dispute. We can put it in a back burner until sea level rise will submerge all of these islands and they become also our exclusive economic zone if within 200 nautical miles from our baseline. So let's just relax as far as the territorial dispute is concerned because there's really no tribunal that can acquire a compulsory jurisdiction. And nature is on our side. Sea level rise will be about one to two meters by the end of the century and that will submerge all of these islands. So uh, what I'm saying is our dispute with the ASEAN countries, uh, our territorial dispute is something that we can manage. Uh, we, we have a standstill agreement. Uh, nobody will expand, nobody will occupy new features. But our problem is China because every day we face them. They harass our all our vessels, fishing vessels or our Coast Guard. Uh, they harass or even our navy in the BRP Sierra Madre. So that, that is really our problem. And the biggest problem is really to get the gas in Red Bank. That is the one thing that is very urgent because that will devastate our economy if we cannot get the uh, the gas in Red Bank. Yeah, uh, I think we'll have to return to the Red Bank again and again over the coming months and years uh, as we, we wait for the government's move. Uh, but just Scorpio, what do you think also about this growing cooperation between Philippines and Vietnam under Marcus Jr.? I mean, obviously, there's the angle of food security there because, what, 90% of our rice imports come from Vietnam. But we heard also words used like maritime cooperation agreement. Uh, are, is this closer to what you and I have been advocating for quite some time, which is maybe a kind of a COC among us, maybe a kind of maritime delimitation, boundary delimitation based on the arbitration award, not. And are you optimistic that's the direction we can move towards? Or or do you think that indeed the Marcus administration should aggressively pursue uh, you know, sensible bilateral maritime deals with, with Vietnam and from there also work it with Malaysia and all? I think, ironically, I think I'm more comfortable dealing with Vietnam on this than Malaysia because ang gulo ng Malaysia eh, mas magulo pa sa atin. Eh. But, but we can talk about that more. Uh, where yeah, do you when, that? Uh, on the mari cooperation on maritime issues, uh, that refers to uh, the waters beyond the territorial sea, no? because uh, uh, that's the maritime dispute. We don't have a dispute with Vietnam on our EEZ, waters beyond the territorial sea, and we can cooperate with them. How? Well, I'm thinking that uh, ASEAN countries, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, even Indonesia, should be prepared to conduct joint patrols in their own exclusive economic zones. They can jointly patrol with us or we in our EEZ in the West Philippine Sea. We will jointly patrol with them in the EEZ in the uh, in Vietnam, in, in Indonesia and Malaysia. Because Richard, we cannot we cannot discount the possibility. It's a remote possibility that. The U.S. might turn isolationist and just leave the South China Sea. Yeah, no, if, sure. if if um if the U.S. will decide that uh, or can come to agreement with the with the with the with the Chinese to divide the world, they will withdraw from the South China Sea. If today they withdraw from the South China Sea, then the nine dash line, the ten dash line becomes the national boundary of China. No naval force will stop them or can stop them. It's only the US Navy and uh, uh, with the assistance of the uh, British and the French and the Japanese that's stopping China from establishing the 10 dash line as its national boundary in the South China Sea. And they've included that already in their latest map. Before they did not explain the meaning of, uh, they were ambiguous as to the meaning of the dashes. Now they say it's their international boundary. It's there in the legend of the map. So they have, they're telling us that's the national boundary of China. What if the U.S. will withdraw? What will happen to us? So we have to prepare for that day 
that we will be defending our own EEZ against China without the assistance of uh, European or North American powers or even Japan or South Korea. So we we, we must prepare for that day because uh, that's it's a distinct, it's a remote possibility, but you know who knows if uh, there might be a different president of the US who thinks that it's good to divide the world with China. And there's, of course, the possibility of, you know, a war in Taiwan, which will also directly have implications uh, for the South China Sea. Because, you know, there's no way China can dominate Taiwan without having some sort of dominance in the, you know, the rear area, which is the South China Sea. So I think that also compresses the 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 the, the time horizons, in a sense, and also gives a greater sense of urgency that hindi lang tayo pwede umasa sa America. We have to also work it out with other countries in the region, Right. Uh, including yes. U.S. allies like Japan, Australia, etc., who also have their own interests. I, I'm sure your concerns about U.S. withdrawal, it's also a concern in Japan, also a concern in Australia, right? Because bati sila, lagot din sila, if ever. You yes. start, but they have to prepare, right, accordingly. Yeah, we, we have to prepare. And uh, right now, everybody's saying that uh, the next move of China will be to invade uh, invade Taiwan. But we, we are really the low-lying foot. If China encounters difficulty in invading Taiwan and uh, President Xi is under pressure to create a diversion from their domestic problems, they might he might just choose the Philippines as the low-lying fruit and uh, maybe build uh, uh, more uh, naval bases in the Spratlys or even in Scarborough Shoal. So uh, we uh, we are really the low, low-lying fruit here and the alternative to an invasion uh, uh, of Taiwan. So we have to prepare for that also. Thank you. Uh, now, Jessica, before we go to the last part of this this conversation, whereby perhaps we can look at the range of options we have to maximize our position and not to be so low-hanging fruit fully. Um, let's talk about this um, discussion, re DOJ, and also the Office of Solicitor General about filing potential new arbitration case against China uh, on the grounds of the damages that they have inflicted on our coral reefs, no? Basis on my latest reports and evidences that I've been gathering. Uh, a, I mean, how do you feel about this? What are the prospects? I, I think we tried to do something with that a few years ago when the late uh, Foreign Secretary Albert de Rosario and also the other Justice uh, uh, Carpio Morales, of course, uh, pushed uh, for that ICC cases against Xi Jinping. And all. It did not prosper because ICC said it doesn't have jurisdiction. So Technically speaking, what kind of arbitration are we looking at here, uh, Justice Carpi? Because you have been one of the leading voices for what I call, uh, let's say, follow through arbitration cases. Like, like hindi dapat end all be all lang in 2016. Dapat simula pa lang yun a new chapter of law, law fair, you know, going after Chinese companies, etc. But at the same time, isn't this a bit ironic? Because it's the same DOJ and 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 Solicitor General mm-hmm. Office which has been, I don't know, bashing ICC or saying wala kayong pake dito, like. Mm, doesn't that undermine our moral ascendancy or or you know or even momentum in terms of getting the help of international arbitration bodies? I mean, you can have the cake and eat it too, right? Or you, maybe yes, uh, there are two uh, fora here, Richard. The what was filed against President Xi Jinping was a crime against humanity, but that is before the ICC, the International Criminal Court. Yes. Uh, uh, the the, if we file an environmental case against China for the, the destruction of the coral reef, it will be with the UNCLOS Tribunal. Uh, remember, in the arbitral award of the, the UNCLOS Tribunal, right. uh, the tribunal ruled that uh, uh, China caused severe damage, permanent damage to the coral reef system in the spread list. But we did not ask for uh, damages because we felt that... Uh, uh, what was more important at the time was to uh, was to strike down the nine dash line as a as a basis of the claim of China uh, for to encroach on our exclusive economic zone. Uh, we did not ask for damages, but uh, this time, if we ask for damages, we can uh, file the case before an uncle's tribunal. Because the same Article Two Eight Seven Annex Seven compulsory arbitration. I mean, the same. Yes. Yeah, we the can same. Do the same. Yeah. Yeah, the, the same. Uh, we will now file because uh, we that was one of our statements of claim when we filed the uh, arbitration in 2013 that 
China caused severe damage to the coral reef system. We will do the same, but this time we will add damages. Uh, we there will be a the tribunal will accept jurisdiction because that's very clear within the jurisdiction of the of an unclass tribunal. It yeah. it is not it does not have to be the territory of the Philippines because the tribunal has jurisdiction over uh, exclusive economic zones. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Justice Carpe, for clarifying that in terms of this follows. My sense is, had it not been someone like Duterte, perhaps that would have been an option back in 2016 and 17, not in 2023, 2024, no? So we lost many, many years to effectuate, no? Uh, yung ating karapatan sovereign rights dyan sa West Philippines. We lost many years to strengthen our positions at Reed Bank, no? And development of resources there. We lost many years in terms of making sure na yung ating mga mangingista, no? And ating mga resources dyan ay hindi binababoy, no? Uh, so, uh, this is where, of course, Justice Corby, I'm pushing back against the argument na magpasalamat tayo kay Digong dahil, I don't know, minura-mura niya yung Amerika. Ngayon, mas sinasuportahan tayo ng Amerika. I mean, dahil sa kanya, sa kanyang katapangan. Di ba? Of course, I'm, from, I'm sure you're familiar with that line of argument. No, I mean, maybe I kind of agree with it to a certain degree. I even had Greg Pauling and some of our American friends kind of saying, yeah, the U.S. is more taking us seriously. But my sense is just the physics of geopolitics, just concerns about China would have always made the Philippines more important. Hindi natin kailangan babastosin yung mga aliado natin or gawin yung mga ginawa ni Digong because we lost so much ground with vis-a-vis -vis China in the South China Sea. Now, the, now, Justice Scorpio, um, you were also mentioning a few years ago, was that in your Wall Street Journal op-ed about even um, the option of taking the cases to courts in different countries where Chinese state-owned companies have assets and perhaps those assets could be a basis for damage uh, reparations, etc. Is that something you were still pushing for? Let's say Sinopec, CNPC, some of the Chinese companies who are involved in illegal activities, drilling, whatever they could be uh, liable for, for damages uh, via their subsidiaries in Western countries. That's correct, uh, Richard. Let us assume that uh, uh, we cannot survey and drill in Reed Bank because uh, of Chinese opposition, and Sinuk instead gets the gas. Now, the tribunal has ruled that the gas belongs to the Philippines. So China, through its... Uh, Sinuk, state subsidiary, state corporation, got the gas and sells the gas. So that is stolen property. The gas belongs to us. China stole it. So we can sue China, let's say in Canada, where uh, Sinuk has operations, uh, some assets, and we can attach those assets. We can go to a country that is a member of the United of UNCLOS, uh, because they are a member of UNCLOS, they will recognize the arbitral award and uh, and sued for damages for the theft that uh, was uh, made by China for stealing the gas because the gas belongs to us. That's the decision of the arbitral tribunal. The, that's still in the play if China will get the gas. Now, if China does not the gas, get the gas, we will sue China for damages if China prevents us from getting the gas. And so, uh, Justice Carpio, can we use that as a credible threat to nudge the Chinese to let us have our way in the Reed Bank based on our own rights? Maybe, I don't know, we can have a service contract with the Chinese somewhere there in the West Philippines para lang good feels. Pero the idea of them claiming yung resources at Reed Bank, that's just non-negotiable, right? I mean, what is, ano yung discarte na pwede natin gamitin with all of these well, options that now we have under Marcos' administration that we didn't have to really get the the, the ball rolling sa Reed Bank? Kasi wala eh, the bomb, eh, parang ano, ticking bomb talaga yan, di ba? Well, we, we, we tried that. We really went to the maximum, to the edge of the cliff, uh, in, the ter in the words of uh, Teddy Boy. When we signed the MOU with China, because under the MOU Memorandum of Understanding, uh, we agreed to cooperate with China to, to get the gas in Reed Bank, but under the contract service contract system of the Philippines. And China agreed. We signed that. We, we said under the service contract of the Philippines, because every service contract of the Philippines says, whereas the first whereas clause says, whereas the oil and gas belongs to the Philippines. Yeah. So I said, that's okay. 
because that's very clear. And there's another provision that the contract shall be governed by Philippine law. I said, that's it. Those are the two provisions that have to be there for us to sign an MOU. And they were there. So we were happy. And the terms of uh, reference was, uh, the terms of reference was uh, signed. Okay, just in, to implement the MOU. But the last agreement was supposed to be a commercial agreement between Sinuk and Forum Energy, whereby Sinuk will become a subcontractor of Forum Energy because Forum Energy has the concession for service contract 72, that's Reed Bank. So uh, Sinuk will either be a purely service contractor or will be an equity uh, uh, holder and subcontractor of Forum Energy. But at the last minute, China said, wait a minute, let's remove that phrase whereas the oil and gas belongs to China, belongs to the Philippines, remove that clause that Philippine law will govern. They wanted to remove those two provisions. And Teddy Boy said, if we remove that, we'll fall off the constitutional cliff. So he said, I cannot do that. And he recommended to President Duterte to terminate the the those uh, signed the agreements already and uh, Duterte agreed. So that's the history there. We tried our best. Uh, I was happy that China was willing to sign the MOU because the way I thought... For a service contract, for a service, not a joint development agreement, etc. No, it's not a joint development. It's a service contract yeah. means China is just our agent as contractor. Like we like are Shell the owner... In, in Malampaya, something like that. Yes, just like Shell. Just like Shell. They just provide service and they paid in kind with the, with the gas. But they... They are just a contractor. The owner is the Philippines. That was perfect. But uh, I th I don't know why. I thought that uh, President Z would already find that as a template for a South China Sea-wide uh, solution to the dispute. Because I talked to the Vietnamese, to the Malaysians. They said, that's perfect with us. If you sign, we can sign also. And I thought we were in the cusp of finding a solution to the South China Sea dispute. But at the last minute, China took back its word. And uh, we had to scuttle it. And what uh, Secretary Teddy Boy did was correct, to just scuttle it. Now, uh, uh, when, uh, when after, after uh, uh, President uh, Marcos Jr. came back and he said, let's have joint patrol with the Americans, China again said, let's negotiate for a joint... Yeah. <laughs> cooperation again but I said, again. well it, it will go back to that it will boil down to that and so nothing really has happened so far uh but if china really wants to be to because no southeast asian country that is infringed by the nine dash line will ever consider china a friend as long as china claims their maritime zones or territories the, the, the people will never accept it no government can survive if they concede to China the maritime zones. That's why Vietnam, Malaysia, they will never concede. The government, the government will fall if it concedes. So uh, I thought China was willing to come to an agreement. It will get 40% of the gas of each country. And China, Sinok, will displace all these Western companies. All Western companies will be displaced by by Sinuk. And I thought that was the the that that was enough for them. But apparently they were they are more greedy. They want to get everything. That's the big problem. You give them one inch, they want the whole hand. <laughs> um yeah that so that's why kailangan na you're very clear with your red lines and you negotiate hard. No hindi pedi yung mabait ka yung Tatay Digong style na I love you, protect me. All of those kind of barangay geopolitics, it's not going to work. You have to be very professional when you deal with a rising power like China because they'll also protect their own national interests and push yeah. for a maximalist position. We, we, we must be aware of our maximum position and yes. stay stay there. And last, uh, Justice Carpe, so what is your, what is like the action plan you're thinking for the coming Six months to one year. Because the, the time element is very important here. Yung read bank, paubus na, 
Diyan naman sa Ayungin Shoal, medyo alanganin din tayo doon because isa pa yan na taking time bomb, di ba? Kasi yung Sierra Madre is also falling apart. So so you have two really, really sensitive situations at the same time and and it's really staring us in the eye. So for six years, digong din, dribble-dribble lang niya yan, hindi niya sinolv yan. So now this is on the lap of Kawawa naman si Marcos Jr. No? Like, protect BBM, di ba? He has to deal with these two simultaneous disasters. No, uh, 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 What is the action plan here, uh, Justice Carpio? I didn't know, 3.5 point, what about the action plan? In the next six months to one year pa lang, no? I mean, forget, who knows in five years what's going to happen to Sheremado? Well, the, the number one thing that we have to do is to get the gas in Reed Bank. That means... We have to finalize the joint patrol with the U.S. Uh, before the end of the year and get Forum Energy to send its survey ship and drilling ship there. We have to complete that because it takes four years at least to develop Reed Bank. So if we run out of gas in Malampaya in two years, it will take us four years to develop uh, Reed Bank. So we have a gap of yes, two years yeah. where we have to import LNG. And that will be very painful for the economy. So it's really urgent. Uh, I hope the entire nation will realize the urgency of the matter that we have to we have to know can we get the gas in Reed Bank or not? Because if we cannot get the gas in Reed Bank, we have to tighten our belts. It it will be terrible for us to be importing LNG uh, because the manufacturing costs, uh, the biggest part of manufacturing costs is really energy in the Philippines. So if that much it's about 30, 30% of your total cost. If that 30% goes up by 50%, that's terrible. I mean, you have to get out. The the companies that are operating, you will have to leave the country if uh, power rates go up by 50%. So it, it will be a terrible thing. Choke our national so, development, yeah. So that's it. For me, the number one problem is we have to solve this uh this uh gas uh shortage which i see coming uh, within two years and and in terms of etka is there are there ways uh, or is is there some some direction trajectory with the etka sa, sa tingin yun, justice carpio could be also helpful to this issue i mean like more forward presence by americans in autista well, airbase or close to the west philippine sea do you think that's relevant well, we we can have a deal with China. If China does not stop us, uh, if China recognizes our EEZ in the West Philippine Sea, we can tell China we don't need those additional EDCA sites. You know, then, uh, ship not then. Yeah, we, we don't, because they're saying that uh, we are stoking the flames. But uh, it's because they're stopping us from getting the gas in Reed Bank. Because let us say that the uh, Something uh, a skirmish happens in Reed Bank. We try to get the gas. Uh, our our ship, our navy ship, is attacked there by the Chinese. We invoke the treaty, and where will the Americans pass in going to Reed Bank? They have to pass through the Basi Channel. So the Americans are saying, protect the Basi Channel because our warships will be passing there. So we have to protect the Basi Channel because that is the root of the. American warships that will that that will that will uh, that will support us that will defend us in the West Philippine Sea. We have to provide a safe passage for them because it's right there along our uh, beside our coast. And but, but, but today, if China says, "Okay, you can get the gas in the Red Bank," we don't need the Edka sites. Thank you. Uh, and last one, Justice Scarpio. I mean. I'm very happy with some things changing under the current administration when it comes to West Philippines, etc. At the same time, we know that President Marcos Jr. is, well, to put it mildly, quite a conflict avoidant guy, you know. Um, and now, literally, we're talking about potentially risking conflict with China if we press ahead. Now, I think both of us deep inside uh, agree that, um, you know, if you really stand your ground, you will get away with it, just like how the Malaysians had got away with the Petronas. Uh, not only with China, but in Vietnam, they din sa kanya. May three-way race pa nga sila at one point. My sense naman talaga is if you stand your ground, the bullies will back out. But you have to be absolutely clear that you're going to stand your ground and have some sort of backup. I don't know if President Marcus Jr. is seeing it in the same way perhaps you and I have been seeing it. I don't know if he has been following the situation with Malaysia and others as careful as you and I. 
But I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but how cautiously optimistic you are that he will develop that. He has to be a bit Duterte, right? In a good way. Well, <laughs> eh. yeah. well the, 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 the fear of God is in his eyes because if we cannot, if we cannot get the gas in Reed Bank, inflation will go through the roof. He will become very unpopular. That 20 peso per kilo of uh, rice will be gone forever. I mean, no, he, he, he will be laughed at already. If he cannot even get the gas in Reed Bank, the, the sentiment of the people will change. Prices will go up. Food prices will go up. And, you know, when food prices go up, I've seen it happen. I was there in Malacanang when we had a rice crisis. And people become emotional. Yeah, you, cannot, you, cannot, uh, you cannot reason with people when, when uh, they cannot buy rice or the rice prices go up. So he will become very unpopular. He knows this, I think. So I think he has really no choice but to, to do a joint patrol and get that uh, survey done by before the end of the year. Thank you very much, Justice Carver. I really appreciate this because I think the angle of Reed Bank is something that has been underemphasized in a lot of discussions. I mean, you can imagine others are saying, Alam niyo na mga Caribbean accounts. <laughs> like I could see you know, people talking about other angles to explain this change in tone and all of that. But but I also, for me, naman, I, I was also felt the shadow of the father would have played some sort of role. And you have uh, people like Ambassador Romualdez, who we interviewed a few months ago, also here, uh, who also said, well, the, the, the father legacy aspect was perhaps was quite important for, for Mark Jr. in charting his relationship with the with the great powers. Thank you very much, Justice Carper, for emphasizing that. My sense is, for better or worse, we'll have to catch up in a few months' time, uh, uh, aside from the other fora that we always join together, because this is a very sensitive and developing issue, you know, very fast developing issue. But at, I'm, at least I'm glad that, uh, you know, we're not in a situation whereby we have to even question the president of the <laughs> Republic. At least tapos na yung ganin panahon. That was very hard for us to do, right? Marami salamat, Justice right. Carpio. Please, Stay strong. Take care of yourself. Mabuhay ka, Justice Carpio. And uh, catch up soon. Maraming Thank salam. you, Richard. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. God bless. <laughs>